Hey, it is Thursday, and that means it's time for Church History Thursday. I'm glad you're here for the Daily Download. Let's talk a little bit about Frederick the Wise. I know, I know, you've never heard of Frederick the Wise before. If you have, you've forgotten whatever you'd heard about him. But last week, it was, of course, Reformation Day. We talked a little bit about Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation, those 95 theses that he nailed to the door of the church there in Wittenberg, actually the Castle Church. And this actually is where Frederick the Wise comes into play. Now, now Frederick was, uh, well, an elector, which is a German word for kind of a prince. He was responsible for a large area of land called Saxony and one of the most important cities in that area was Wittenberg. Now, as a, as the elect the elector the elector of Wittenberg, he was responsible for looking out for the people, trying to raise some money, uh, encouraging building the area. And he decided that one of the ways he could do that was by gathering as many relics as possible. Now, the Catholic Church at this time, uh, you know, tried to find things that were created in the uh, the days of Jesus, or maybe Bible things, or from particles or pieces of clothing or sometimes like body parts of, uh, of these people that were famous or were saints and to collect them together and have people take a look at them. They would come from miles around to see them. It was like a giant museum of like Bible artifacts. Now, often, if we're honest, many of these relics were not particularly trustworthy. I mean, people would sell them and they would buy them. They would say, hey, this is a true piece of the cross. We have a piece of the cross. And here it is in Wittenberg, and if you'd like to see it, you can come. Or, hey, we have part of the crown that Jesus wore. Or, we have a shred from the, the the cloak that he wore, or et cetera, et cetera, all kinds of things. This is Peter's, you know, uh, cloak, or this is a lock of hair from Paul, or this is a, well, I saw one that's in Bruges, uh, Belgium, that actually says it's a vial of blood from Jesus. Now, that's really something. Now, most of those don't seem like to me that they are likely particularly real. But anyway, people would come to see this stuff, which, you know, if you thought it was real, you probably would. Frederick got a collection of this stuff going. He decided he wanted a church to show it off in. And so he had the castle church built there in Wittenberg. And if you saw the video last week, you saw it. It is a beautiful church. It's still used today by a vibrant congregation that does love Jesus. But it was built so that they could house these relics. He started collecting more and more of these relics until he had one of the largest collections of relics in all of Europe. You know how many? 19,000 relics. I know, it's a ridiculous number. How could anybody have 19,000 of anything, let alone relics that were supposed to be from the Bible or from saints or whatever the case may be? But anyway, Frederick's got this collection. It's got 19,000 things in it. People would come to see these, and then they were told that not only could they could they pay for indulgences to reduce their time in purgatory or find forgiveness, but just coming and seeing these relics might cut some days off of this uh, this purgatory business. As we talked about last week, one of the things they might have said was, you know what, I can shave off a million years from your time in purgatory if you'll just give a donation, if you'll just pay one of these indulgences uh, to the church. And uh, the same thing about these relics. If you see these relics, they'll cut some years off of your time in purgatory. Now, of course, as a Baptist, we don't believe in purgatory, uh, but this was a Catholic belief, this intermediary step that you had to stay in, and we stayed there long enough, you kind of paid for your sins, and you got to go to heaven. Now, none of those are things are biblical, but they were things that they were believed uh, in the 16th century in the church. So you could pay that stuff down if you saw the relics. Uh, you could pay that stuff down if you gave money through the indulgences. And if you came to Wittenberg, you could do both. So it was really kind of quite a racket from my perspective. And I think these relics are not mentioned much in the conversation about Luther, but it feels like to me there's no doubt they were part of the thing that pushed him right over the top. So Frederick the Wise actually turns out to be not only a benefactor, but a protector of Luther all of his days, in spite of the fact that Luther is saying, hey, this whole thing with the relics and trying to earn your salvation or buy your salvation or buy your forgiveness through giving these indulgences is crazy stuff. That would have cut in the, you know, Frederick's profits, or at least maybe some of the money that was coming to the city. But whatever the case, Frederick thought that Luther was really sincere and he was worth protecting, even though they disagreed. Well, uh, there's a lesson from in any moment in history, and I think this one in particular is just to be reminded: we are saved by grace through faith. Nothing we see, nothing we visit, nothing we pay, nothing we could ever do, no good deed we could accomplish will ever help us to get to heaven any faster or cause us to be forgiven of our sin any more than we already have been by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross for all of us. Today, I would encourage you to be the kind of person that lives by grace, full of gratitude for what Jesus has done for you. Love you guys. Have a fantastic day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.